In 1987, John Wimber wrote a story about a missional-minded church in New York City, in the inner city, that closed its doors after faithful years of ministry. Uh, He never revealed the name of this church, but I think the story is really quite compelling nonetheless. According to Wimber, the very final act of this church was to have a, a funeral service over the weekend and invite all of the people that had somehow been impacted by this church to come and celebrate its life and ministry. It's been, it was estimated that over 20,000 people that weekend came through the doors of that church to celebrate its life. The most amazing thing about the story really to me is this. John Wimber proclaims that everybody that came in the doors of the church to celebrate the life of this church over that weekend had been impacted through the new work that that church had started. In fact, one man shared during the process as he went up to the microphone and talked about what God had done He said that the final act of love this dying church was able to accomplish was to give all of its best people and best givers away to launch 11 new works in the city. Now, no longer does the organ play. The sound of children aren't heard running through the hallways. The pulpit is empty. And yet the ministry of this church has just begun. Its effectiveness and its impact can never be quantified when we look at how it's going to affect future Christ followers. Because the intentional choice of the leaders of this church was not to maintain the status quo, was not to see how long they could keep the doors open, but to see what they could do with the resources that God had blessed them with to launch as many churches as they could to lead as many people to Christ as was possible. Even in the course of closure, the vision of this church, it didn't end. You see, the original founders of the church had a vision for reaching the community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what they were doing. The closing of the doors of that church, actually, uh, it, it increased. And the ministry of the church picked up even though it was no longer in existence. We live in a culture that seems to, uh, to live by the mantra that um, we've got to find the fountain of youth, Right? We're all looking for the fountain of youth. Thousands of Americans are going to stream to the doctor this year for Botox injections, right? For tummy tucks, I might be the next one. Uh, or whatever else they can do to try to increase or to look young or to, to, to incorporate that fountain of youth. But here's a 100% guarantee we can all live by or maybe die by, right? Death can't be beaten. No matter how long we prolong it, it always wins in the end. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says this, It is appointed unto men once to die. Look, as Christ followers, we have a different theology of death, right? Death for us isn't the end. It's just the beginning of a new beginning. It's the beginning of eternity. It's something that we all hope to experience, right? An eternity with Christ. It shouldn't be odd for us as Christians to look at, appreciate, and welcome death. Unfortunately, a secular view of death has really permeated the theology of our church leaders and our churches, right? We believe that at any cost, we have to keep the doors of a church open. Because to close the doors of a church means we have somehow failed God. Or that God is somehow a failure in our communities, right? I mean, we may not speak that openly, but that's what we feel. That's what we think. We think closing a door is, is not something uh, of, of a church, is not something we should do. We have to get into our minds that church, and by, when I say church, I'm not talking big C, I'm talking little c. Church, little c, was never intended by God to be an eternal entity. We view them as stopping off points in the history of God. They're just simply stopping off points, launch boards for the kingdom work that God does. 